programs and choices for my fifth graders. So make sure you stay tuned. Friends, if you're brand new to my channel, my name is Arlene with Arlene and Company. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you will be alerted whenever there's a new video. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you missed my first video of my curricular choices uh, for this week, it went up a couple of days ago. I will link it. It's going to be up there or up there. It's going to pop up one of these two places. <laughs> And that was for my grade six and seventh grader. Um, yes, yeah, a little bit of a hybrid situation going on there. Um, and I discussed a lot of our family supplements and um, middle school and actually some high school resources as well. So make sure you check out that video. Today we're gonna be focusing on my fifth grader and also some middle school supplements that we are adding. Um, not necessarily just for him, but um, as a whole. Um, this is a very chillax collab, so make sure that you meet up with my friends. I will caption them down below. Um, Shannon from the Hip Home Life will be sharing um, soon-ish. <laughs> Between this week and next week, we're very fluid and kind of just like very relaxed of how we do these things. Um, Tanya from Project Happy Home that has an amazing channel here. Um, and also Amy from Renegade Homeschool has been sharing over on Instagram. You will find um, her clips of our, her selection. She has an eighth grader and a third grader and she saved it to her highlights right in her bio. So make sure that you hook up with her as well. Um, and you're able to discuss and ask questions and all that jazz. So um, I did give my girl Kelly a little bit of a hard time for not joining us this time around, but guess what? You can follow her too because she's awesome. And yeah, so <laughs> let's not forget about her. <laughs> Maybe she'll like join us last minute. Can I put you on the spot like that, Kelly? Some paper and pen. Let's get to it. Um, this is a school nest notebook. I didn't show my daughter's um, notebook for this year, and I'm probably gonna share it over on Instagram because she kind of just like went all crazy and decorated all inside. He just um, um, outside the cover, and I love that because it brings me back to my Lisa Frank days. Oh, he's a little challenging to plan just because, like you know, he he has a big brain. <laughs> He has a beautiful neurodiverse brain, just like my daughter, and um, he has different strengths. It's kind of funny because his strengths are my daughter's weaknesses, like language arts, um, and that's a weakness for her. But for him, it's something that he excels at. It's just like, yeah, I'll write that. I'll write a page or two or more on that, and we go from know there. that I am going to gloss over things that I already showed inside and um, on the first video, um, even if they're doing it together. Um, just so I'm, it's not just repetitive. So if there's something I flash for and you just want to see a little bit more, I either have a, already a review on it, review coming, or it's shown on my grade six, seventh, my six, seventh grader. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> and so take a look at that. I do kind of show you inside as I go along um, chatting because nobody wants to just listen to me talk. So let's not do Conquest that. Conquest Journal, travel notebook that is going to help me stay on track. So let's start with English and language arts. Um, he is going to do just with like my daughter, he was going to do Brave Writer um, and he's going to join in on the arrows and boomerangs portfolio where I keep all our printable curricular resources. Um, I race, um, not recently, but in the past I've used a disc bound system to have like the ones that are just like a month long. Um, but I've since dropped that and I've added it all into my well plan gals, um, um, majigger. So, um, I actually do have a page with them that they were so nice to create for me that you can see all of my favorite goodies and it has a discount code. Um, I think it's Arlene 15 and you can see that on the page. Anyway, so I have everything kind of just sorted in here. Um, I'll talk more about all the planners that I have. I have quite a few. Um, uh, yeah, that's, it is what it is. So as I discussed before, we're actually doing Artemis Fowl right now. 
um, this month and um, I'll show you a little bit inside just so you can get an idea for this particular issue um, for example they're uh, going to be focusing on areas like prefix suffixes sense and fragments alliteration homophones dialogue idioms pronouns semicolons proverb pronouns imagery and anti-hero if you're buying these um, as an individual um, resource um, know that they're going to have the like if it's an error they're going to have an arrow guide so you read that first so you can get really comfortable with how everything flows and how you present the material and how it's a collaborative effort and i will say this if you're not familiar with brave writer brave writer is not something you kind of just like here is a workbook trial please work independently there's really a lot of um obviously teacher involvement um, with it. And um, it requires a little bit of planning, which I find absolutely super simple to do, but planning is my thing. Uh, but even if planning is not your thing, I think the way that is laid out now with all the extra resources, it makes it really simple for you to adapt it and um, even if you're a type B personality or whatever it may be. Um, anyway. Spelling, additional grammar, and things like that. Um, but then as I explain on our end of year review um, video, which I will link, will it be up here or will it be up here? Let's see. <laughs> I can never remember when I'm recording which side I'm supposed to point to, but it's gonna be up there. <laughs> and it's also on my playlist where you can see my end of year review um, and um, recap, which I shared a lot of information on. Um, so originally I was gonna deviate from literature based for our language arts completely, but I decided to do something that um, made a little bit more sense to us, but still kept a literature component with us, is to go ahead and add arrows and boomerangs because it's extremely flexible for me to do with another uh, more traditional program, which I'm gonna show you in just a bit. Um, it's very flexible and easy for me to do adapt those Culturing things. Culturing ownership, but it's been renamed to building confidence and the graphics and stuff are now updated on that. Um, just know that the content is the same. So if you have the older one, that's fine. So those are for like your tweens, your older kiddos. If um, I've done partnership writing before I did jot it down years ago at this point. Um, so we're gonna do those components, not not strict, strict or anything like that. Know that if you didn't watch my other video, I treat curricula as, uh, as a tool and I pick up them apart. I really do. I pick them apart and do separate little pieces here and there to make the perfect formula for us. So when you see an abundance of resources and curricula from me and you're just like, Marlene, how? Just know that I'm not doing absolutely every single portion of it. Review uh, of this. So I'll link that here there um so you can see it i didn't focus too much on the fifth grade but I did show a lot of the other elements this is by um hardcore the hmh actually and this is used in several schools across um, the country um and i really like it i really enjoy the on the format the only thing um unlike my perspective for my daughter um i have to source this like either use ebay or there is some portions that rainbow resource still has available depending on the grades the lower grades i think they have more of it um and uh, the higher grade they have less um the only problem with journeys is that it only goes up to sixth grade so after that there is another um textbook that is from this from hmh it's called the interliterature and these are for your secondary grades um i am still kind of just playing around if i want to i'll see how the year goes and i'll let you guys know in my updates um if you want to see more inside of this just let me know about the interliterature this is the student textbook so there's other components that supports this curricula and of course if you're a classroom teacher they have an online components as well so interliterature is like kind of like the natural progression after you live um, you leave journeys I may um, switch him over to my perspective in grade six once we get there because I have all the other components and the teacher guide and everything for that so we'll see how it goes um, for the most part I'm very happy um, how journeys is going and we have already started this um, for uh, a bit so now. This is the reader's notebook and from this reader's notebook I will be able to pull, they are not going to do everything in here, but we're going to be able to pull some spelling that I like the way they do the spelling because they have all these different types of activities throughout it um, that you know it's like 
maybe it's a crossword puzzle, maybe you're proofreading um, and finding the misspelled words, and maybe you know you're doing it in different formats. So I like how it is within contents. Um, I know that we're gonna get our some spelling and grammar and everything like that from a brave writer. This is something that is great for just like those daily type of practice. And because they're also the pages are perforated, I could also um, I haven't decided if I wanted to pull them out Your guide with um, with it. And I'm glad I got this as well because it has some additional ideas and um, oh, additional like tools for presentation and just giving you um, obviously the answer key as well. One of the other components of Journey that I really um, enjoy and like and that my, uh, my son will be doing um, and is doing is the writing handbook. The writing handbook, I got the, this is the teacher guide. Um, is really nice. I like how it has those supporting elements as they're learning to write and to the writing, not just a creative piece or just free form short story or anything like that. And then they have these sentence starters already built in there. And then they start them off like step one, here's your sentence starter, here's your, um, you know, the guidance and here's some transition words. And then from there they go and um, say on a separate sheet of paper, write your opinion essay or write your summary of this. Um, and then they flip the screen script and give them a different prompt um, and then they have that additional writing opportunity after they had one that had an assistance in a model format to it so you see like the breakdown like for example this that says parts of an opinion essay is going to have the introduction that tells them what should be in that part the body the organization and the my last <laughs> video the other one um, the writing handbook from the HMH even though my daughter's doing my perspective I'm actually going to go ahead and add this to her as well uh, for the grade six one um, that they have. Again, they don't have grade seven. I wanted to grab and do, it's called the Close Reader. Um, and they have a, a lot of elements that you can go ahead and add. So um, those like, you know, exact facts and things like that, that they're pulling from the text. With my son um, and comprehension has always been a little bit tricky. Like he's always, it, it, I think it's a lot of it has to do with like attention um his attention span and just like you know kind of just goes on to his own little world um and then misses those details so i think this is going to be a really great tool this. like i really love how oak meadows math program is formatted um it's really no fuss no muss like it's just you know it's really nicely done um, however, as someone that considers math their weakness, I really wish my daughter was also using teaching textbook, but for the time being, she's just really tied into the Oak Meadow math. Um, and I, like I said, we enjoy it. We like it. I recommend it. Um, but I wish for my personal, like my side that she was also doing teaching textbook, but teaching textbook is what he will continue on. So he'll be doing teaching textbook, um, grade five. Um, he's wrapping up grade four. He's still finishing off some elements, um, of it. We kind of like different breaks here in between. Um, and that is the only subject that I don't supplement, add to, tweak or anything. I just leave it as is and we just do the next thing. I have brief, I'm going to briefly mention this again because it's going to be a family um, science is the MOSA Mac. And the MOSA Mac is something that is used in traditional school settings. Um, it is line, online based. I am going to do a full review of this. I know I got a lot of questions on this um, after they saw the video. Um, and I'm like recording as I go. It's just it's life. Anyways, uh, MOSA Mac, I really like the format of it. I like um, the, the supporting visual aids, the interactive part. And that if we're not able to do a hands-on experiment. They still have a lot of things that they are going to be involved with with the Mosamac. Um, so I um, appreciate their layout. I wanna see how this year goes with it. Um, and um, so far so good, I like it. Um, and the kiddos are enjoying it. We also have a membership with um, Generation Genius. My daughter didn't appreciate it as much. She, I, I like it, I really do. Um, there's not, like there's enough content in there, especially like, you know, for various grades um, to last you a bit. But um, being a science heavy home, I think we would blast through a lot of the lessons very quickly. Um, but she kind of prefers to Mosa Mac because she feels that Generation Genius kind of just talks down to her a little bit. And she just has that science brain. My son really enjoys it. So I may add certain elements that just for him from Generation Genius to support certain uh, his um, age group and things like that. Because unlike my daughter where science she really excels, 
else he's just you know on par with something. i also picked up a couple textbook that i can use as supporting material for him um just uh, especially like on some days i really have to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one with my daughter and if i want him to do a certain um self-directed activity and i want it to be not always language arts or not always you know specific subject then i can pull from these um resources and do that uh, with the science textbook. So I have um, the fifth grade level. Um, I only have the textbook. There's other elements that comes with it. I think the science fusion one you can actually find on Rainbow Resource as a bundle. Don't quote me on them. I'm pretty sure you can. I actually bought this used on Thriftbook because I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it. So this is the Florida edition again from Hartford. I really enjoy Hartford. I love the setup of this. Um, this totally can be a, a complete standalone curricula. There is a lot of hands-on. Um, there's a lot of activities that are recommended. Um, you know, you do, you listen, you write, you do all the components of science and I like having something that is geared for his grade um, that will align with what other kiddos are learning about this year as well. Um, we will also continue um, actually, I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, I also have their other that is not the science fusion because I wanted to compare them both and I will do a full walkthrough of both programs just in case um, somebody is interested. Um, is the Florida edition um, science of Harcourt as well and this is the fifth grade one pretty sure <laughs> and um, they have like readers and things like that as well and uh, I'm not sure which one I like better at this point. Um, I don't know, <laughs> um, but it, uh, I like the breakdown of it. Again, you have all the um, science topics and um, all the different categories and um, the breakdown of it and the, the investigate, um, the reading in science, reading for review, um, and, you know, and just all those elements that it includes. I really like the way that it is broken down. I remember down. how much I used to love these type of textbooks when I saw Tanya from Project Happy Home share, um, I I don't remember how long ago, but she shared a couple textbooks, a uh, science ones, and that reminded me that at first, when we first started homeschooling, that was something that I really Here enjoyed. In the summer, doing. we were going to be working uh, with Blossom and Root Level Five. This is their part one oceanography. So this is something I saved. Um, we'll do the ocean studies with this. Um, if you, you can buy the science um, separately, but know that it's the complete science year. So you're gonna have part one oceanography and part two will be, I'll just have something fun to do um, intermittently and kind of just switch things up. I still have the grammar galaxies. I have full reviews of these over on IGTV. Um, and you'll find them in my page guide. Um, the middle school ones is in their own category if you're looking at middle school. This one is the Red Star, which starts, it's recommended for grade five and up, and it's Grammar Galaxy. Um, and we have, I think this is actually the very first curriculum that, homeschool curriculum that we actually purchased. Um, way back when because I used to use all kinds of free resources. I used textbook. I used printout all those stuff So grabbed um, it for him. This is level four five um, Grade four five and hers is level six eight. I want to say um, And this is Sinosaurus is a says a user-friendly resource that you can turn to whenever you have any questions relating to science packed with useful information Addresses key science topic, including doing science, life, uh, life science, earth science, physical science, natural resources, the environment, and you know, basically STEM. So I do like these, and I picked these up from Rainbow Resource. Some other things that, and I have not reviewed or looked deeply into this, so um, I would just like hang on. <laughs> I'm not saying like go run and buy this or anything like that, or with anything, you guys. Make sure you do your own research and make sure that it matches what you want to do with your family. I picked up this kit because I had picked up a um, slide set from Easy Peasy 2 uh, for our slides, even though we have some um, kits to make our own. And this was uh, another, they have like these science fair project kits and it has like the online component. So the box itself doesn't have much in it. Um, I have not had time to dig into these, but I do have a few of these different things. And it's called Glowing Detective, this one, for forensic science. So if you remember, we're going to pull in a lot of like forensic science this year as well. And I showed this for grades 6 through 12. 
Um, and this is something that can be used for years. There's so much in it. So I did a quick flippy through. And the other I thought it would like tie in. I have a lot of forensic science kits, you know, the ones that you buy. Um, I have them even linked in my Amazon store, I believe. But it comes with just a little bit of the supplies. There wasn't much in it. Um, this was not inexpensive at all. <laughs> Um, but it's connected to project in a box, basically. It's the 100 piece slot prepared slide set that I got from Easy Peasy. This was not cheap either, um, but I really like it. And um, again, we're a size of heavy home, so I like these resources. Um, so you can see, and I'll just like switch it over so you can see a little bit better. You have um, right here, you can look at the 100 pieces of the prepare slides and you'll see that they are numbered so um, you can easily find them um, on there. So um, you can take a nice little look at We've had our microscope for a while now. If they're um, if the one that we use, which I feel like it's a hybrid, like you still have the digital display, but you still have to manually adjust the lens and everything like that, which was in the drawing and design, which is the high school level program. It's going to be found under fine arts. I go over this in again, the other video of Aldo. I know he will join in on some of this. I wanted to have something that was a little bit, you know, more at his Blossom level. And, root. and this is profile nine profiles in art. Um, and this is volume two. So you can get volume one um, of the nine profiles in art from level four and get that portion. So this is like a mixture of art appreciation mixed in with art instruction. Um, again, and that's from Blossom and Root. On to social studies. As I described before and I showed, we will be doing Build Your Library level seven together. So um, that is the year of world geography. And the way I'm gonna do this is gonna be very involved <laughs> um, because it always has been with our culture studies and um, you know, just like, just, it always has been like from, um, example, Tissel and Biscuit, and she has the country study. So I own them all. <laughs> I own them all. She was so, so gracious. Um, I have purchased some and some were sent to me for review. Um, so we will add those into the um, intermittently if there is one, if the country we're studying or the place that we are studying is uh, one that I have a Tissel and Biscuit country unit in, then we'll go ahead and add that. Um, so what I'm going to do is let Build Your Library lead us to where we are studying, what location, what people, whatever, and then find my added resource to enhance it. So this is actually my old um, Erin Condren teacher binder and of course um, I got rid of the stuffing and kept the teacher binder. I am going to go over these um, my organization and set up for um, world geography and culture studies and how we're doing that in a separate video um, soon-ish so you can see like everything that we add and how we do this um, but this is all of our letters from afar and charm posts and then there's a section for like our history types of letter like time track and things like that that we had and also our animal letters from francis um again those are also ones um like francis on here that are can be location specific to you know depending of where the animal comes from and those are things that I can add as well so it'll be nice to be able to kind of just pull this binder and um, we're working on this together um, my daughter went ahead and wrote on the tabs of different continents and then we're gonna um, they are taking a few a day and putting them in the correct continent of where it belongs the letters and so it's gonna take a while because this is like years of subscription in there all in there I used to always keep them all in their envelope and now it kind of just veered off with that um, we also have my Erin Condren um, accordion file which has like things that we had that are lower grade like our little passports like I didn't want to throw those things out they come with these little pamphlets and those pamphlets has um, you know just activities and extra info on the country and stuff like that or maps um, so anything like it's a printable or something that was extra or it goes in the accordion file I still have to add tabs 
and I'll most likely divide these by region. that way and just label as that and that way anytime I add like something that I see that will enhance the lesson for when we're studying that part of the world I can just easily pull it from that again I'm gonna show a full walkthrough of all the setup um, on a future dive into world geography and culture studies for the year is tasty geographies from blossom and root blossom and root includes tasty geography and levels four and five again that can be spanned into higher grades as well um, and for example this one is one from level four this one is nigeria and she has a breakdown of additional um, literature that you can pick up on it even though build your library has quite a bit um, it's nice to see sometimes they have different titles listed, sometimes they have different video connections sometimes. So again, this is why I love blending because I can take the best of all Lessons, of the ones and then any recipes and things like that that you want to try from my country and then we will go ahead into like our kitchen schooling, which my kiddos love to be in the kitchen. They love to cook. They love to try different, different dishes and they love the whole process of it. So I want to add that. We're also going to... Um, um, I've had them before, but I had so many letters coming in and it was hard to keep up. This year, we're going to go ahead and make sure we add the Miss Macy's um, Tasty Travels, I want to say it's called. Um, and it's also from the same family of letters from a far term, Post and Meet Francis and all that more and all those additional resources that we have for geography or social studies. Study. I'll show you all those elements in a future video because that is a whole half an hour. I did on show some other additional elements to other parts in um, our My Grade 6, 7 video. So make sure you check those out because I'm not going to repeat um, those parts um, and those resources that I have. Now he has his well-planned day uh, planner that was sent to me for review. And this one is recommended for grades three to eight, I want to say. Um, this is super rad. I still have the video review to do with this with you guys. Um, so you can get a really close look. Um, remember I have a link in the bio to my Well Planned Day um, page, which gives also has the um, discount code, which was Arlene15, I wanna say. Um, but it has like the reference sheets in the back just so you get a um, quick glance at it. So, you know, parts of speech, capitalize it, um, commonly misspelled words, calculations, multiplication guide. Um, it has this big, nice social studies section with like in my country. And then you have um, right here, you have like the, the capital, how do you um, abbreviate it, um, the US president, um, the government, um, all these things are all in here. And then like the world geography section and uh, then for the same thing like my daughter I'm just gonna have them um, write down what they accomplished like lesson we did lesson 27 for our teaching textbook you know and then just write it down teaching textbook lesson 27 check off because then I can um, glance at this at the end of the week also when I'm doing my reverse planning I try to do reverse planning every single day as I'm doing it but it doesn't always work that way depending on how like intensive the day is um, so it's nice to for them to go ahead and start jotting down what they've done um, based on what was assigned to them um, especially I just want them to do these things to gain more independence and time management I what it was called I use this this is the silliest thing but I use this when I was younger um, to memorize my multiplication charts right and this is just like a simple little thing that you can add if you want to have your kiddos add some um, facts. I know there's things that are way more advanced now, but I used to love this thing and I'm so glad that um, I can't remember who figured it out what I was talking about and sent me the link. I found my copy in thrift books and this was by Scholastic. It's literally like a couple bucks. This is the multiplication wipe off book. So what is cool about that is that you have all the multiplication table. Then you have this that you can do like a dry erase or wet erase marker and write down your answers and put cover the flap with it, right? And then you have the answers there. And then um, you have like you could flip the page. So here's your 11. Um, multiplication chart and just cover it and then go ahead and just try like some rope memorization thing there and then go from there so the reason that my son is not doing like oak meadow or blossom or level five is because he did level five with my daughter so he's also aged out as well um oak meadow grade five i just did it it's it's linked and connected to the social studies which is u.s history and he was part of a lot of those conversation to repeat it is just not ideal. Um, so that's why we're not doing that. So basically the only like thing that he's continuing on from last year is teaching textbook. 
um, and then some elements of blossom and root here. Is all I have for you for now, I think. Maybe so. Tell me, little book. Is that in world geography this year? as opposed to a particular historical point in doing a, a certain block here and there of River Voices Volume 2 this year. I'm probably going to save the rest of it for the following year. Um, and, you know, may insert some Oak Meadow ancient um, history components as well here and there. Um, of what I'm most likely going to do, and it's just going to be specific, like intro. Emily Cook, the creator of Build Your Library, she has a website called History Book by Book. It's amazing. It's awesome. It's free. Go on there. Follow the page also on Instagram. And I let's say I want literature or, you know, some historical fiction books from uh, World War II. And then she has like this gigantic database of lists. It's amazing. And then she shares her reviews also on the Instagram page. So I'm gonna be pulling a lot from that and adding those like, you know, just as a read aloud, you know, like while they're eating lunch or something. Um, so there, that's where we're at. I hope this was helpful. Um, these videos are always a giant beast to edit because I have so much to show and so much back and forth. So I truly appreciate if this was helpful. Go ahead and hit a thumbs up, stick around, subscribe, um, and share with friends because <laughs> it makes it all this work worth it. It's literally so many hours just for one video. <laughs> I just had to put that in there because I'm exhausted. Um, so much for stopping by. Let me know what's on your plate this year, what you're still considering, what um, you know gems have you found, um, and let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys next time. As always, thank you so much for your presence. Bye bye. During the summer, we. I'm gonna study, study, study. Okay, that works. I will focus more on all those social studies. How do I say so study study focus more on those social studies I give up studies studies studs <laughs> oh, I've been on here too long we'll focus on that and um what was I saying? What are we talking about? You show me the truth and your light all I've got to